Hi, this is Sharon Lim. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I blog at SharonItWithYou.blogspot.com and today we're going to do a card using the Woodland Wonder stamp set. And this is what the card looks like. Let me slide off the ribbon and then it opens up like that. Great for a group card, which is my favorite to make um, for my friend so a bunch of people can actually sign it and not just have a little piece that you can just sign your name so let's get started i use the directions that were on page 53 of the mini catalog the january to june 2021 on page 53 it actually has the measurements which is um, awesome it's four by ten and three quarters and scored at five and a quarter and eight and this is what happened first so here's the 10 and 3 quarters by 4, scoring at 5 and a quarter and 8. And then I stamped the three pieces, the base, the one with the animals, and then the tree. But when I folded it, it didn't look anything like the card that was in the catalog. And so I determined there was just an extra piece of the trunk that you needed to add to this part. And I'll show you what I did. And I'm going to bring in the Stamparatus, and I'm using Memento ink. So I'm going to lay the cardstock here, and I'm going to start with the base of the tree. And I'm going to line it up so it hits um, a little bit over the score line putting it where I needed to in terms of centering it on the card. And then I like to use the plate and catch it like that. I'm going to ink it up. Oh, and a good tip for that is to actually put um, the case underneath so you can actually have a base to get some good even inking done. Let's see how this looks. Aha! Awesome. Then, what I need to do is, like I said, I need that extra bit of the trunk here. So what I'm going to do is stick a piece of scratch paper here, enough to cover it up. But I also want to be able to see it so I can make sure that I line it up right. So I'm going to place it here and then use the plate again to catch it. And it already gave some ink, which is fine, because that's all I needed is that, and I don't need the grass part. And that just gives that extra part piece there. And when I take it off, it's all lined up. Isn't that great? Then I need the next part, the part with the animals. But I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to shift over to this plate. And turn it. And I'm going to make sure to line it up again. And I'm going to use this bottom plate here and catch it. And ink it up. Sorry, this is off camera. And press. There you go. And then the last part is going to be the top of the tree. So I'm going to place it here and line it up. And again, what's great about the plates, I can flip it over and use the other side. So first I need to catch it. There we go. Ink it up. I think that middle part needs a little bit more ink. Yep, I was right. Let's see if this worked. Yay! So we're going to take that out. And I'll be 
think. So this is the tester. Dun, dun, dun. So now it actually looks like a tree here. So I'm going to add the embellished, the extra stamps, and I'll show the sample here that were also added here. And let's see, we have the bunny peeking out. There you go. We have, I placed some of the other um, items also already, so I stamped it before, so it just fits perfectly. The notes come out of the bird, the owl's holding onto the flag, the little pole is sticking out here, and the um, butterflies there. So those are pre-set, but you can, what I did is I placed it where I wanted it, and then inked it up. Use my paper towel. So I'm gonna put a little bit more ink on the flag. This one I'm not gonna be able to do twice without the stamparatus. So I'm gonna make sure that the owl looks like it's holding on to the flag. The banner pole is there. And look at that. And the last one is the banner. And it fits perfectly on that pole right there. I just have to line up. Ta-da! And then, what I have to do is some coloring. I'm not going to do all of them, but I'll just show you most of the ones that I did and some little tips and tricks on there. Let's see. For the leaves, I like to do... A little bit of the, the centers with the dark and while it's still lit air and wet this is a lesson I learned is that's when you want to blend it because that's where you're gonna get do you see the little accents on there and you won't see it till it actually dries but it really it really gives the leaves dimension I think because you can actually see the blend of the dark so that's what I did with that uh, clips of coral for the bird, some gray for the squirrel, and then I switched it up for the pool party for the other bird and yell, um, I think it was Mango Melody. Yeah, Mango Melody for the beaks. So I can do those. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Nope, oh, I think I got the dark one instead of the light one. I think that's still good. And then the pool party. Here we go. The bird. Um, gray for the raccoon. Um, I use for the owl. I used the bronze because that was a dark brown that I just happened to have. And then a little mango melody for his or her beak. Also, um, another tip I did um, was I actually used crumb cake for the trunk. So I got the both, whoops, there's crumb cake. Here it is, the light. So what I did is I used, I did the kind of same technique where I put a little dark on the lines just to highlight. And then I used the brush side of the light one to blend it all in so it kind of looked like bark and give that dimension kind of thing do you see that see how different it looks when it's wet and then when it's dry and that's basically it I did some uh, flurry flamingo for this one or actually no what is that I think that's pool party and this is flurry flamingo I also did a little flirty flamingo light and dark for the rabbit, so the inside of his ears, and his little snout, and I did a little dark on his nose just for a little difference. Uh, there you go. And let me do the beak of the owl. Let's see, is there anything else? I might as well go ahead and finish. Uh, there's the squirrel. 
you know, can be gray, can be brown. Entirely up to you what you prefer. I did light crumb cake. Oops, sorry for that. And then a little bronze for the nose. A little dark for the raccoon. Dark gray granite. There you go. Is there anything else I'm missing? I'll finish up the leaves and the trunk, but this is basically what it turns out to be. And then I tied it with some um, ribbon also. And I didn't want to waste that piece that I talked about that I didn't, um, that didn't quite make it. So instead, I folded it this way, add a little tab at the bottom with a pull, and did it this way. So it'll still fit on the base, which in the base card I didn't share with you is the four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's just the size of a regular card because of this part fits on. So you can do it both ways. This way I thought it would be cool, or the one I just showed you with an extra piece of the trunk. That fits there. And then I did a third uh, style because these are hot now, the slimline cards. So eight and a half by seven and a half scored at three and three quarters. And this one just only used the three stamps. So the base, the animals, and the top fits perfectly on a slimline card. And then you have plenty of space in there to actually sign it. So I'll leave that here for a second because that's the size of the card. And that size of the white cardstock, three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I showed you three styles. I hope you like them. This is the one with the extra trunk that folded out. This is the one that followed the directions, but pulls out a different way. So I hope you like that. Thank you for letting me share this with you and have a great day. Bye.